What's up, rockers? So, interesting day today. I um, went up to see Fozzie up in Stroudsburg, me and my buddy Harrison. And uh, we got the meet and greet package, so that was pretty cool. We went in at like 3.30. The show wasn't supposed to start till 6.30. Well, the doors didn't open till 6. First act at 6.30. But the meet and greet was at 3.30. So we went in. There was about 20 of us. Uh, we were just BSing with the band a little bit. I got to ask them a few questions. And ironically enough, someone made a comment in one of my videos and said that Stars uh, was a good band to recommend. And I actually have a Stars album on vinyl. I just didn't get a chance to, uh, you know, check it out yet. But we got, we, they all wanted everybody to go around and ask the band a question. And my question was being obsessed with, you know, 70s hard rock and heavy metal. My question to them was, what is their favorite um, lesser known 70s hard rock or heavy metal band and uh i had actually my kansas point and no return shirt on and yeah and uh rich ward pointed to me and said kansas i'm like ah oh, no shit all right that's pretty cool and chris jericho said uh stars he says he got into the stars about a year and a half ago uh found it by accident and he that he said he recommended checking out stars so i thought that was pretty cool i got this uh signed uh photograph and a signed copy of the Judas CD it's pretty good songs on that album actually of course Judas that's my favorite one by then hands down so like I said I'm not really too big into modern rock but I do like Fozzie me and my buddy Harrison have been going to see them since uh, you know every time they've been around in the area since 2012 we started and we started down in uh lancaster's chameleon club i saw them once up in wilkes-barre uh, where else did i see them at we saw them down at reverb and reading once and now the sherman theater in uh stroudsburg the reason i mentioned all that was because um well not only was it completely a badass experience i was down in uh this record shop called uh, Main Street Jukebox, I believe it was, was the name of it. Yep, Main Street Jukebox. There it is. Check it out, guys. Excellent selection. They have CDs, cassettes, and vinyl. And they sell equipment, too. And um, uh, <laughs> Rich Ward actually bought a um, Sony dual cassette deck. Like a, uh, it was, that, was, that was pretty cool. We were looking at him. He's like, uh, he's like, no shit, he's checking it out. Yeah, he actually... yeah. Uh, one of the band members from the band rock band Fozzy bought a cassette deck off of these guys. That was awesome. And he was asking what I got. I pulled it through. One of the ones that surprised him was actually this one. Greg Kinban. I bought another Greg Kinban tape. And he's like, yeah, you bought Greg Kin on cassette? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. And this one here, where is it? I got to find it. Man. I'll go through all these. This is a neat little mixtape I, uh, I bought. If it looks like it was recorded well and on good quality. Just for collector's purposes. Yeah, I got out of there relatively low damage. That was for the uh, Ghost on cassette, which I'll show you that. And this is my total for the first one. So under a hundred, actually under eighty bucks actually for the whole trip. So that's not bad at all. This CD was twenty. Um, the Fozzy CD was twenty, and that photograph came for free. I guess we'll go over the purchase quick. We can get to it. Conspiracy by Greg Kin. Uh, Roxy Music Avalon on a homemade. This CD is pretty cool too. It's a uh, it's from 1984 to 1994. Lehigh Valley Rocks. I don't recognize any of the music or any of the bands for that matter. Maybe some of you guys do, but I'm assuming it's all local bands from local rock and roll bands from Lehigh Valley. So I'm looking forward to checking that out one of these nights when I got some free time. Oh crap. Double disc set. It's got a little bit of wear, but nothing that will affect the play. The only thing about them with their CD section is they don't keep the CDs in the case, so you can't. So I'm in the early pressing, so I can't tell if it's an original press or a remaster sometimes, because all you can see is a spine. But that's a, in this case, it didn't really matter. What else do we got? Oh, here it is. 
this is the one he pointed out. He's like, Billy's like, I love, so yeah, actually, he's actually a diehard Billy Joel fan, too. Not Jericho, this is, um, Rich Ward. But this is actually his a, a album with Attila, but just relabeled and distributed as California Flash, and it does have the old style pressure pads. I don't want to touch it too much, it's actually in pretty good shape yet. But check that out. He was uh, like an all over that. He's like, yep, it's exactly what it is. Wouldn't that be something these guys uh, end up seeing this video somehow? But yeah, Jericho and the whole band was in there. It was awesome, man. It, it was really cool. Me and my buddy Harrison just checked this this music store out. You know, coincidentally, just browsing around. And uh, literally, right uh, like a half hour to an hour after the meet and greet. And Fozzie, the band, just walks into this record store and starts moseying around. And they were, they were buying stuff. Uh, me and my buddy Harrison were looking at this uh, Cliff Burton figurine from Talica. And, uh, yeah, Chris Jericho bought it. <laughs> we're like, no shit. I got another uh, Quarter Flash album. This one's pretty elusive on CD for the most part. When it does show up on eBay, it usually fetches a decent amount. Uh, the reason I bought it was because, obviously, Hard in My Heart is an amazing song. But their self-titled debut has a hidden gem on there called Find Another Fool. It's a badass, hard, heavy rocker. And uh, I just want to see if this has anything like that on there. We got David Lee Roth. Little Ain't Enough. Early uh, Warner Brothers press. Robert Palmer's Riptide. I don't have that yet on any format. It's an island press, but distributed by Warner Brothers. You can tell by the uh, black bridge underneath. That's why I, I always called that a bridge for some reason. It has to have the felt glued back on, but that's okay. It's there. That's the main thing. Billy Joel single. This came packed and it came in a Joel case, which doesn't have the uh, pieces for the tape to hold the wheels in so the tape don't get spooled up. But I've never seen this one before, so I bought it just because I collect all everything Billy Joel. So you guys all know that by now. Jerry Rafferty, I guess this is his first album. It says 1973, I believe it said. So, yeah, 73, and obviously distributed in 78. And they actually, Jericho actually gave a shout out during an actual concert to 97.9 X WBSX out of, uh, I think it's a Hazleton and Wilkesbury station. Actually, I know it is. I just forget if it's Hazleton or Wilkesbury. I know it's one of the two. Wilkesbury, as I call it. Bought this Grateful Dead compilation. Because I feel like the artwork on it. Somebody put a lot of time into making it, and it's dated 9 11, 1983. I thought that was pretty cool. And it's made on a high quality Maxell, high epitaxel cassette, too. So it should sound really good. Whenever I do go to play it back. I always admired the Grateful Dead for being the one band that didn't make a big deal out of people pirating their music. They actually encourage it for all, for like their live bootlegs and stuff like that. This is the same David Lee Roth. Nope, this is the other David Lee Roth I got. So I have all, I think he only has three solo albums if I'm not mistaken. Now I, now I have all three of them. But this got Skyscraper two weeks ago. Greg Kin, Citizen Kin. I think I bought this two weeks ago too, but I couldn't remember it. And the tapes are so cheap that if I bought doubles, so freaking what? But yeah. I actually have two of them. The yeah, David Journey's debut album. I've actually never listened to this before, and uh now I can, so I'll be checking this out. This one's actually in pretty good shape too. Yeah, I just had an awesome day, man. It was just such a good time. With, uh, just having a meet and greet with a, with a rock band that you like, and then you're just out there shopping, not a record shopping like you normally would, just trying to kill some time before the rock show show, and the band actually walks in and recognizes you. They recognize my shirt. They recognize me as a guy that asked them that question. So it just goes to show you that they actually, Fozzie does, they actually, they care about their fans. They pay attention, you know, they... They recognize you, remember you, and they recognize. They knew me and Harrison were there before from previous years too. They said, oh, "I've seen you guys before." I'm like, "Yeah, absolutely, damn right you have." <laughs> like I said, it's kind of weird for me to be into a into a band of this era, but well, they started in 1998 technically, but 
There's not many bands that are out now that I really care about. I mean, they're one of them. And obviously this, I like, I enjoy the music of Ghost a lot. I'm a Christian guy myself. I've been always raised in a Christian family. So I don't really pay attention to the lyrics too much. At least I try not to. But I recognize good rock and roll when I hear it. And this is, to me, I just like their sound, you know. And I like the fact that they don't scream. I don't, I don't really care for screaming at all. They don't really scream much, if at all, that I've heard. I haven't heard every single one of their songs either, but I bought this album because a buddy of mine I work with is a diehard Ghost fan, and uh, he said it has like a 1980s rock, you know, 1980s uh, sound to it. So he recommended checking it out. I'm like, yeah, you know what? Square Hammer is one of my favorite songs of all time, and Sir Rice is a banger. Dance Macabre, um, From the Pinnacle to the Pit, Rats, Faith. There's a... There's a few songs of it by theirs I really like, so yeah, uh, looking forward to checking it out. In fact, actually, hang on a second. Okay. It says here it's uh it was relatively expensive, thirty bucks. I've been buying vinyl lately, and I haven't in a long time, so it's limited indie retail exclusive. Orchid Vinyl Bonus Stickers. Let's find out what Orchid Vinyl looks like. I'm assuming that's a special edition or a special cut. I don't know, like a pattern maybe? I don't really know. But it likes it nice and easy around the edge so you can get it out. This don't damage the sleeve or the, any of the inserts. It looks like we're taking a look at the packaging first because that's what wants to come out right now. Like I said, I do apologize for not having a clean work or a nice looking pretty work area right now. Less than a week away, I'll have my uh, music room back. I can't freaking wait. Oh, this is cool. Oh, man. You guys want to see this separate, I can do a video on just this album. Wow. Look at that artwork, man. That is incredible. That is absolutely incredible. I just wish I could lay it out better for you. Here's the lyrics. Each one has its own. Yeah, I don't like the demonic stuff too much. Like I said, that that's just awesome looking. Oh, I hit the wrong button there. But yeah, this is where I was uh, getting at. This is awesome. Dude, I am loving this. Poppy Murtis. That's cool. So was, I, I know I'm a CD guy. I always preach CDs. I like them better, convenient. I like the sound quality better because I really don't like pops and clicks in my music. Although with brand new vinyl, you don't really have that. So, but I don't really buy brand new vinyl very often because it's so damn expensive. Why get? Why pay? Like I said, why pay thirty bucks for the vinyl? I can get the CD for eleven bucks, just like the cassette. They didn't have the CD there, but this cassette was eleven ninety nine plus tax. Might as well open that too and take a look at it, but. Gonna open the uh, record itself. Oh man. Come on. Okay, so it's purple. But it is neat looking. Purple is not one of my favorite colors, but. That is cool. Well, this is no environment for a vinyl record right now out in the garage. So it's going to go back in its little uh, case and I got to get a, a uh, plastic wrapping for it like I do all my records. Keep them in this pristine condition as long as possible. I wish I could have got the Fozzy album on vinyl but they, they didn't have it at the merch stand and I didn't see it in the record store either. So, but yeah. Being said, like I said, excuse my messy uh, work area. My garage is pretty much always a mess. I got multiple projects going on right now and yeah, it's uh, not finished yet, but that's some one of my uh, future projects to do. So anyway, that being said, I'm going to, uh, yeah, it's a disaster in here. Like I said, I want to get my music stuff out of here in, in the house, but this is literally the only flat surface I have right now to work is with her moving in and the, uh, my sister and the in-laws moving out. It's It's been crazy. Like I said, you guys saw my basement, and right now it's even worse than it was the last time you've seen it, so... That's okay. A couple more days, I'll have it all back, and I'll have a, I'll be able to make you nice, pretty looking videos again instead of uh, in a uh, workbench on top of a AC unit that I'm, I didn't even get to restoring yet. Anyway, that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think. 
And of course, uh, rock on, and I will catch you the next time. Peace. And Fozzie rocks. <laughs>